Hi, welcome to the Personal History Hub. This is the last Cold War video and it's all about the impact of Gorbachev's new thinking and the end of the Cold War. So Gorbachev had shown that he was prepared to make deals with the USA. The Soviet economy could no longer sustain supporting forces in Eastern Europe. He went even further when he rejected the Brezhnev Doctrine in 1988. And in 1989, he accepted that members of the Warsaw Pact could make changes outside of their own countries without expecting any outside interference. This became known as the Sinatra Doctrine. This was all part of Gorbachev's new thinking on Eastern Europe, which meant that ideology would play a much smaller role in Soviet foreign affairs. In practice, this meant that the Soviet Union would no longer favour trade with communist countries over trade with capitalist countries. Gorbachev was keen for Eastern European countries to embrace this new thinking and to enjoy perestroika and glasnost. In addition, he withdrew Soviet troops from Eastern European bases in order to save money. So what were the changes in Eastern Europe? Gorbachev had never intended to weaken communist control in Eastern Europe. As he intended in the Soviet Union, he wanted to strengthen communism by reform. However, once reform in Eastern Europe started, he was unable to contain it. Reform started in Poland first. In 1989, a non-communist government was elected. The party was called Solidarity, and Mazowiecki became the first non-communist prime minister in Eastern Europe. In the same year, a number of political parties were formed in Hungary, and free elections were proposed for 1990. Gorbachev did not interfere and began to withdraw Soviet troops from Hungary. The key to the changes in Eastern Europe in 1989 was Hungary's decision to open its border with Austria in May 1989. This meant that there was now a hole in the Iron Curtain. This created a way for East Germans to move to West Germany. They could go through Czechoslovakia into Hungary, then cross in Austria and finally to West Germany. This brought into question whether the Berlin Wall and the Iron Curtain would continue to exist. So, developments in East Germany. East Germany was slow to embrace Perestroika and Glasnost. Indeed, the East German government even banned Soviet publications in the late 1980s because they believed they would undermine communism. However, the communist government was unable to contain the desire of many East Germans for freedom once they had seen other Eastern European states abandoning communism. Demonstrations occurred in East Germany in 1989 and there were calls for changes to the system of government. Gorbachev visited East Germany in October 1989 and it informed political leaders that the Soviet Union would not become involved in its eternal affairs. Demonstrations continued and on the 4th of November the largest demonstration in East Germany's history took place, with over 1 million people in East Germany demanding democracy and free elections. As soon as democratic elections were announced in Hungary, there was a mass movement of East German citizens through Hungary to West Germany. As a result, the East German government was forced to announce much greater freedom of travel for East German citizens. On the 9th of November, the East German government announced the opening of the border crossings into West Germany. The people began to dismantle the Berlin Wall. Within a few days, over one million people per day had seized the chance to see relatives and experience life in the West. West and East Germany were finally reunited on the 3rd of October 1990. Tensions in the world seemed to ease by the day, and while the power of the Soviet Union seemed to be dwindling so quickly, the new Germany joined NATO, and in 1991 the Warsaw Pact was dissolved. So there is people, that, this picture shows people breaking down the Berlin Wall. So what happened with that collapse of the Soviet Union? Gorbachev was now undoubtedly the darling of the West. He was widely respected for his willingness to reform and the fact that his policies had encouraged the breakup of Eastern Europe. He was seen as a hero to many in the world and was awarded the Nobel Peace Prize in 1990. However, at home in the Soviet Union, his policies were treated with suspicion and led to even greater criticism. Leading members of the Communist Party believed that Perestroika and Glasnost had weakened communism rather than revising it. As a result, on the 19th of August 1991, a group of senior communist officials, known as the Gang of Eight, organised a coup which removed Gorbachev from power. The new government declared a state of emergency and removed the policies of Perestroika and Glasnost. However, the new government only lasted three days. Boris Yeltsin, the chair of the Russia Supreme Soviet, played a crucial role in overthrowing this new government. 
who declared it illegal and he called on the Russian people to resist the new regime. On the 21st of August, Gorbachev returned to Mo uh, Moscow and resumed his position as leader. However, the coup had damaged the authority of Gorbachev and made Yeltsin a popular hero. Gorbachev's final attempt to save the Soviet Union was the introduction of a new constitution, which would give the Soviet republics such as Latvia and the Ukraine greater independence. The leaders of these countries wanted full independence and never accepted the new constitution. The many nationalities and ethnic, and ethnic groups saw how the satellite states in Eastern Europe had been able to break away from Moscow and they now wanted to do the same. In 1990, the Baltic states of Estonia, Latvia and Lithuania declared themselves independent, which was accepted by Moscow in 1991. The countries demanded independence and there were fears that the Soviet Union uh, would disintegrate. Gorbachev announced dissolution of the Soviet Union on the 25th of December 1991 and it was split into independent states. So there are the former states of the Soviet Union all split down into independent states. So the end of the Warsaw Pact. As Soviet control of Eastern Europe fell away, it became obvious that the Warsaw Pact could not service. The pact was, was an alliance that united the communist states of Eastern Europe against the capitalist states of the West. However, as first Poland, then Hungary and finally East Germany all rejected communism, the pact no longer served any purpose. The Soviet Union's military strength had been called into question in Afghanistan and its weak economy meant that it could no longer bolster the Warsaw Pact. Furthermore, internal divisions and demands for independence from some of its own socialist republics meant that the Soviet Union was on the verge of collapse. The Soviet Union had been the cement which had kept the Eastern Bloc together. As the cement dissolved, so did the Warsaw Pact, and military cooperation stopped in early 1990, and the pact was formally ended in July 1991. George Bush Sr., the American president, had declared at the Malta summit between him and Gorbachev in 1989 that the Cold War was over. However, communism was still undefeated, and the Russian coup of August 1991 overthrew Gorbachev could well have uh, revived rivalry with the West. Therefore, it was the fall of the Soviet Union in December 91 that finally ended the rivalry between communism in the East and capitalism in the West. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to the Police and All History Hub.